Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to Let's Try Craft the World. Craft the World is a survival builder god game type of thing. I mean, what you want to think about is something like Terraria, something like Dungeon Keeper, something like Dwarf Fortress. And certainly there are plenty of games that have come out in the past couple of years that have fit that kind of bill. However, a lot of them didn't really capture my attention, and that's because in a lot of these games, you're playing a specific character who's wandering around. Think Minecraft, think Terraria, you're just a person. Person running around trying to survive the world. I like to play God games where you direct your minions and tell them what to do to build up the world. And that's exactly what Craft the World is. In this particular game, you're controlling a group of dwarves who are trying to establish a new settlement in this uh, 2D um, side view kind of world. Uh, there's, um, there's a campaign mode, but I'm going to go ahead and go and load up just a um, a randomly procedurally generated level. You can see I've only put in two and a half hours into this game so far. This is just a first impressions. Let's try. But so far, I'm really digging the game. So I'm going to go ahead and take that slot. You can see here we can choose whether we want to play a new campaign mode, but I'm going to go new custom game, which allows to fine tune things. Procedurally generated random levels every time. We can choose a, from a small world, medium, or large. I'm going to go small just for this little uh, video here and make sure everything's really, you know, just tight. Uh, weather events, how frequently you want them. World type, forest worlds, ice world, desert worlds. I'm going to leave it on forest. Tech mode. Sandbox starts you off with everything unlocked. The normal gameplay mode is the tech tree mode, which I will use this just to demonstrate some of the things. Plus, it keeps the interface a little bit more simple and straightforward. Game mode, whether you're having normal or permanent death for your dwarves. Then finally, difficulty, which ranges from very easy all the way to nightmare. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on normal for this particular demo. So here we go. You start off, you've got this gate. This is the gate from which your dwarves will arrive from the dwarven homeland. At the start of the game, you only have one dwarf, a population of one to control. But as you level up your settlement, which is indicated by this number over here, you will get more and more dwarves coming to your colony for you to uh, to control. And you don't control them individually. What you do is you do something like this. Hey, dwarf, go ahead and cut down this tree. And then a dwarf will go and cut down this tree. So even when you have many, many dwarves involved, you don't have to tell individual people what to do. You just queue up uh, a series of things. Oh, I can't collect that wheat yet, but I can queue up a few more trees to be chopped down and I can even tell them to start digging stuff. We just completed our very first task to cut down a tree. I really like this task system. It, um, it doubles as a bit of a tutorial. There's actually a pretty good tutorial system built into the game, but the task system um, supplements that and helps to give you motivation about what the next thing you should do. If we go ahead and see on the left hand side, we've got a list of events, which is to say we got a new task. Um, but this booklet here will open this journal, which will give me a list of all my current tasks. And you can see another task I've got kicked around is, hey, why don't you dig a tunnel? Hey, why don't you complete a shelter? Hey, why don't you learn how to, um, why don't you make all the possible tools that you can make? All these things will award experience points that level up your settlement, and this just allows more dwarves to come in. Also, every time that you level up, you will generally get a, uh, a free item or, or something else uh, as a reward for completing your task, which is very nice. You can also check your bestiary here, which will tell you about all the beasts that you have discovered in the game. You can see I know about hens, sheep, wild boars, giant mites, slugs, skeleton builders, and so on. These are just things that I encountered in my uh, normal campaign beholder over here. Very dangerous. And then some additional notes which are pretty darn handy. I think the interface is very user-friendly. I think it's very colorful, but very, very, very clear what's going on. Just very quickly at the top, you can see the number of uh, dwarves I've got, the amount of mana I have. There are some types of spells that you can get later on. Um, here are some coins that you can use at... Where's the shop on this uh, map? There it is. There's a shop right over here. You can spend your coins. Coins can sometimes drop from monsters, and you can use this to purchase some resources. Now, you don't have to do that. It's just a shortcut. If, you know, you're having a bit of a hard time getting some, I don't know, wool or something like that, you could just go and buy it from the market if you so desire. But I actually haven't had the need to do that at all yet. I'm a little bit worried about my dwarf over here. I don't think he can get back to, uh, yeah, he can't come back up here, which is kind of interesting. I haven't seen that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and... Um, I tell him to chop down this tree, and then I'll get him to dig out some of the tiles, some of the dirt over here, and then we can go ahead and place this earth in the correct position. And we'll talk about the crafting and equipment system in just a moment here. So <clears throat> one of the most important things to do early on is to build a shelter. Now, it's not as critical as a lot of the other survival type games. Um, don't worry about that. Just go over here. Um, 
the other survival -y type games, just because the night time's not going to come for a little bit longer, and even then the first night's not necessarily going to be uh, all that devastating. There we go. So um, we should have enough resources now to go and build up there. I'm very concerned that he's not going to be able to drop off his current load. Hmm, let's see, what, am I, what can I do to work this out? There we go. Now that he's got um, the background material, he's going to be able to go ahead and climb that. So your dwarves can climb walls, and they can climb the, the sort of background material. Now, we can dig that out if we want as well, but clearly I'm going to leave it for now just to make sure that he can do all that. So the dwarf, in addition to going and cutting down things, will pick up some goods that get dropped. Like if you drop down a tree, logs will fall, and the dwarves will automatically pick up the logs, the leaves, the pine cones, and whatever else falls out of the tree, and bring them to your stockpile in the center. And once it's in the stockpile, you can then use those materials to craft things. We'll let him go ahead and uh, finish chopping that down and then he'll start hauling things. So let's talk about the crafting system. Right now, because we are playing on the tech tree mode, we don't have a lot of options. This first panel shows us the type of materials we have. These are um, your very basic materials. So we've got a little bit of wood, we've got a little bit of resin, which comes from trees, and again, we've got those five coins that we could spend at the shop if we want to. This tab here would be various advanced materials, some of which drop directly, but some of them you have to create yourself. For example, um, combining coal and sand to make glass, that's an advanced material. Over here, we've got some furniture we can build. Right now, all we can do is put a beware sign, which will actually keep dwarves away from an area and encourage them to um, not die, which is a pretty good idea. And over here, we've got um, equipment that we can put on our dwarves. Now you can see one of the uh, things that's in this list is this portal spell. If I go ahead and drag that down to my toolbar over there, um, I can put down a portal somewhere. For example, I could put down a portal, uh, whoops. Come on, click, and then down there. And now the dwarf can go through the portal to get to these areas, which is a fantastic shortcut. I didn't actually realize I, I started with the portal spell. We're getting the dwarf over here. It's a fantastic shortcut to help encourage bring goods to the home. This is very important later on when your base is very, very expanded over here, and you tell your dwarves to go and chop down some trees over here, and they have to take this long walk. They've got to climb a bunch of things. You can put these portals, and it speeds things up. And also helps with situations where you feel like your dwarf might be stuck. You can always use the, dwarf, the, uh, the portals to take care of that. Go back into the crafting menu over here. You can see we can create a stone axe, a stone pickaxe, and a club. I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. We need some actual stone for all of these, except for the club. The club just needs two pieces of wood. Now, this is sort of a Minecraft-style building menu, um, but you only have to actually do the Minecrafty thing the very first time you want to make an item. So if I go ahead and click on the wood here, it'll automatically move my view to the pane that's got the wood. So if I go and drag a piece of wood there and a piece of wood there, I can now craft this club. Now that I've done that at least once, what do we have here? Oh, we've got some grain. That's lovely. Now that I've done that at least once, if I go back here and click on the club, I don't have to drag any wood in there. I can just hit this button. It'll automatically put the two pieces of wood in there for me, and I can just click the button one more time, and it'll create a club. Uh, so we are going to need some stone, because I really do want a pickaxe and a stone axe. I'm going to go to the... Oh, we've leveled up! By creating enough goods, we've gone ahead to level two, which gives us an additional dwarf. I believe it doesn't say plus one, but I think it's going to be an additional dwarf. We've also gotten a totem for free and some roots, which is fine. Yep, there we go. The portal is activating and another dwarf is going to come through. There we are. So I'm actually quite happy that I created the, uh, the second club now. Here is my equip screen for my dwarves. I've got Harrigan and I've got Bowley. Uh, they've got mostly the same gear. They're wearing ordinary shirts. One's wearing a tinker hat, which seems to have no stats whatsoever. And the other one is wearing a hooded hat. Likewise, no stats whatsoever. They both also have a stone knife, which is a generic item that is used for fighting, mining, and lumbering. This is their basic item that is used for everything. So they can already, they can always mine, they can always chop down trees, and they can always fight, but quite poorly. If you do build an item, like say the club, you can see the club does 15 damage, that's 50% more. So I'm going to take the club, drag it onto the dwarf, you'll see it goes into their weapon slot over here. They still have the stone knife that they're going to use for digging and for chopping down trees. So that's one of the reasons I want to get some stone to be able to build a pickaxe and, a, um, and an actual wood axe. So we've got some stone over here, so I guess what we'll do is we'll go ahead and queue up some digging, say something like this. That should go ahead and do a relatively good job. Um, oh, they're picking up some stray goods over there, which is fine. Tell you what, these are all things that fell down when some of the trees got caught. I'll go ahead and put a portal there, and I'll put another one. Um, oh, that's a grass block. Okay. 
go ahead and chop that. And then once you do, I'll put a portal right there, which will save a lot of it of walking. There we go. It got portals all over. You can see my mana will regenerate. And actually, as my um, my base level is up, the maximum amount of mana I can have will go up dramatically as well. By the time you get to level 7 or 8, you're going to have something like 80 or 90 mana. Um, there will be other spells that you might start to use at that point. There are light spells that you can put down as opposed to... Um, torches, although the light spells are only temporary. There's uh, sort of rally spells that you can use to um, call forth um, a bunch of dwarves to an area and just encourage them to move to an area. That's a good thing to, when you're attacked, that sort of thing. We completed our dig a tunnel task, which is good. I'm going to cancel that thing. We're just going to keep uh, chopping away at this stone. I won't chop that tile yet just to make sure we can get there. Oh, now we're fine. Um, we can also chop away at the background tiles over here. And you can see if I click on a tile that's got more than one thing going on, it'll give me a pop-up menu to pick what to do if I want to dig out that tile. I can also select the dwarf, command it to go rest, go eat, neither one of which is an option because I don't have a bed or a table right now. I can equip it. I can also grab direct control over dwarf if I want, which I have to say I haven't really done much of. Um, I guess what I can do is I, get, I give them immediate commands to do something, which is fine but as i said in the beginning it's not the way i like to play these games i just like to wave my hand and let my uh my my pets do exactly uh -oh. what they should he's having a little bit of trouble climbing sometimes they will do that sometimes they will fail to climb uh and it really encourages you to get some ladders going on so speaking of that let's go ahead and do a little bit more crafting let's go ahead and get started with our stone pickaxe we'll try to get a pair of them going on and we'll get some wood again the first time i have to do the drag because if i click here nothing happens so i've got to put in the recipe one time Create one item. I'm going to go ahead and create a second one, which will be fine. Um, I will also want to do a stone axe. So again, two pieces of stone here and two pieces of wood there. Create the first one. Create the second one. Now I'll be able to equip them all. There we go. Task complete. We have unlocked all the basic tool making items you can see here, which now... So by completing this, I can now start to make basic furnishings. You can see here that basic cooking requires that you complete both basic illuminating and basic furnishing. You can see that it's not unlocked at all until I get to level three. We also got basic woodworking over here, which allows me to get ladders, log bridges, and wooden hatches. How far does the tech tree go? Pretty goddamn far. That is a lot of different technologies. And here we've got engineering, which allows us to make elevators and Tesla coils. Uh, po elixirs of transfiguration. I don't even know what that does. I haven't gotten this far yet. Ooh, ice arrows, that sounds pretty good. Mithril weapons. Very cool stuff. Ooh, shiny golden armor. We might have to deck out our dwarves in there. Right now, we're going to be lucky to get to the point where we get wooden armor in this particular video. And see, we're here. We did unlock a few things. We got ladders, wooden hatches, log bridges. Wooden hatches are basically doors that, um, but they're they're vertical doors. So, for example, if I want to set up my first um, my first house for these dwarves, I might want to do it down here. And what I could do for that is, let's go ahead and craft a wooden hatch, which just requires four pieces of wood. So let's go ahead and do that right away. We're going to create one hatch. Now I'm going to take this hatch and just put it on my toolbar. And I'm going to take it and put it right here. By putting it in this tile here, what it will do is it will block off. It will put a line right over there. Then I will decide to make this my dwarves home. I can build above ground, especially later on when I get better sort of wall technology, that sort of thing. Although I have uh, dug up a lot of dirt right now. Oops, that's not what I want to do, um, which all goes in here. I can take this earth and I can plop it back down and rebuild walls, for example, out of earth if I want. I should go ahead and equip these weapons. So you can see here I'll equip the stone pickaxe. And right now they'll still use the stone knife for chopping down trees, but now they'll use all constructed weapons for everything. Same thing happens if I go ahead and put the stone axe here. He'll still use his knife for digging, so we'll go ahead and put the uh, the pickaxe, and we can check those stats. You can see it is, again, 50% faster at mining and 50% faster at chopping down trees. It also can be used as a weapon, the stone axe, although, as we can see, the club is a better weapon, so they will prefer that. So now we've got them basically all kitted out. We'll get that going on. Obviously, I think it would be a great idea to build a ladder, which is much faster to go up and down and much safer. So it needs two pieces of wood like that. So let's go ahead and drop wood like that and like that. Let's make a bunch of ladders because we will certainly need a bunch. Hey, look at that. We've completed basic woodworking at this point. Excellent. First few levels of your technologies go very, very quickly. Here's another level up. We're going to get a third dwarf. We got a free piece of earth. Gosh, guys, you shouldn't have. I don't know how to thank you. I've got dirt, okay. And another stone axe, which is actually kind of handy. So I'll go ahead and put a ladder, set of ladders in like this. 
Um, also, just as a shortcut, make sure we've got a portal into our base for now. And uh, yeah, this this is going to be our home. So how do we actually make this our home? Because right now, if we go ahead and check our task list, one of our jobs is still to complete a shelter. A shelter has to be completely enclosed and has to have a totem in it. Now, if we check the crafting thing, where's the totem? Right here. We don't know how to craft a totem yet. However, we do have one. For getting up to, I think it was level 2, we got a free totem. I think we'll get another one at level 7. So I'm going to go ahead and take this totem, just drag it onto my bar. I'm going to grab it and, I don't know, drop it here. So someone will have to go and place that. But by doing that, this will become my home. Ooh. Every now and again when you mine, you might find something like this, a book. This is a logger's book. Increases the speed at which trees can be cut down. So we'll go to one of our dwarves over here. You can see right here we've got the logger's book. Harrigan, I guess, will be my primary tree chopper. He's a pretty good carpenter. Oh, Boley is already a logger. So you know what? Maybe we'll just make uh, Boley a even better logger than before. Uh, oh, yeah, I have to click on it and then click use. There we go. So now he's got 19 points in the logging skill. So he's going to chop down trees that much faster. Um, I hope that the game prioritizes jobs for people that are the most skilled in it. I don't actually know 100% how it prioritizes these various things. It's nighttime now, and if I zoom out, there's probably... Yes, yeah, there's some grave markers over here. And we are now under attack. Oh, that was a beetle. Sometimes when you start chopping down a tree, uh, little bugs will fall out of it. Ticks, I think they're called. Check our, um, our bestiary. Yeah, giant mites, that's what it is, will occasionally fall from trees, and you have to beat them up. We might get some skeletons in this first night. I think we'll be mostly okay. Now, we have completed this, and you see what's going on here? Um, this explosive sort of icon indicates an opening in our in our home that is um, that is not properly barricaded. Can I make lights? Yeah, I can make torches. Do I have resin? I do have resin. Resin you get from trees, and of course, wood you get from trees. So we'll make a handful of torches. We'll drag it over here. Now, all the basic items will instantly be constructed, but later on, there'll be things that require workbenches, and that will require one of your dwarves to actually go and work things. So we'll put we'll put a little bit of lighting in here just to say. There you go. Um, oh, it's because the um, you see that it's open. It's open to the air here. That's what it's actually complaining about. So our house isn't enclosed. So we actually just have to go and put a little bit of dirt in. We can go and kill this uh, this snail. Uh, snails are not particularly threatening. Um, and actually, I don't think I'll be able to reach it until it comes a little bit lower. But um, you can get some slime and other bits from them. There we go. We've now completed our shelter officially. Complete the shelter by putting a totem in the center. This will scare off monsters and evil spirits. The shelter must be protected by walls on all sides, while the entrances should be covered with doors or hatches. So we've got that. So we technically have a shelter, which is great. Part of the issue, though, we do have our stockpile outside, which means if any um, ghostly apparitions come during the night... Oh, we've got some skeletons here. Skeletons are going to be fine. They try to break your stuff. But they're actually they're ghost miners that will come and try to steal your goods. Um, they cannot, I believe the ghost can't approach within 10 tiles of a totem, though. So this will protect it here. But ideally, you have your stockpile inside of your actual base. Oh, we're going to go ahead and smash the, uh, um, the snail, which is fine. I'm going to go ahead, since we're under attack already, and make another club, which seems like a good idea. Oh, can we make a wooden helmet? Do we have any leaves? We do have leaves. That was very good. We are going to need some more wood relatively soon, but let's go ahead and make one wooden helmet, and then go ahead and equip our dwarves. So let's uh, give Harrigan here a wooden helmet, although he did look quite jaunty with his little hat. Hey, we completed another task, and we got another club and a stone pickaxe, um, which is, or stone axe, which is nice for Gorazin, our new person over here. We're going to give him a club and a stone axe. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, you can see here, here's one of those ghostly people that will come try to steal things. I'll go ahead and flag uh, the attack over here. And then people will move up. And maybe we'll tell them to go and beat up that guy. I'll make life a little bit easier. Maybe we'll uh, drop down some portals over here. Monsters cannot use your portals, which is a damn lucky thing. They are taking a little bit of damage here. How do your dwarves heal? Well, they have to rest in a bed. So right now we don't have beds, so they're not really going to be able to heal. But we're going to be able to fight this off anyway. Looks like these skeletons aren't going to move at all, which is really convenient. We're going to go ahead and kill this giant zombie, though. That's pretty important. we got some extra coins, which will get stored in our stockpile. Your teleporter always goes to your stockpile, not where your home is. But this is a pretty good temporary shelter for now. I'm not too worried. Oh, they're moving a little bit. We'll make sure that uh, all our people... We've got an attack command. Yeah, that's all they're doing anyway. 
You can see here, he's complaining that he, where is his bed? Because he wants to heal up. We don't have a bed yet. Can we make a bed? We can. We can make a bed of leaves. We've got the leaves, but we're actually shy on wood, which is why it's red. So we're going to have to go and chop down some more trees. Tell you what, let's go ahead and do up a little bit of that right now. And I'll drop another portal over here for convenience. At some point, we're going to have to start digging deeply and greedily. Oh, there's another skeleton over here. Actually, quite a few. Is it daytime yet? We just leveled up, so we got an extra dwarf, which is handy. Some more torches and some more roots. Torches, I believe, last forever. Under attack over here. We need daytime to come. Well, let me um, drop a portal over here, and then I'm going to tell everyone... Everyone should go to the shelter, so I'll actually use the teleporter for that. We'll just everyone, get everyone to stay at home for a little bit longer until the sun rises, and we should be okay. And yes, we will get you a bed relatively soon. You can see our totem over here, if uh, I mouse over it, tells me I've got some comfort. It'll tell you if you've got zero comfort, and the dot will be zero, uh, red if your shelter is not enclosed, but if it's enclosed, it'll be at the very least yellow. And the higher the comfort becomes, the more towards green it will go. So you can see people are having a little chit-chat. Um, the skeleton is... I don't know why there was a ladder over there. Oh! That's a ghostly apparition that is stealing stuff, indeed. Go ahead and toggle that off, and... Try to encourage my people to go and beat that guy up. So he doesn't steal anything else. Okay, it's daytime, so everything should start to go away. I think the ghostly apparitions will simply vanish, but the skeletons will walk back to their tombstones. Now, you can go and destroy the tombstones, which hopefully cuts back on the number of undead that spawn during the night. But I'm not going to be too, too concerned about that. Let's go ahead and set up another chopping job over there. And give them a portal as well for convenience. And there we go. Why are you freaking out? Poor condition. Where are we under attack? Oh, another one of those mites. Not a concern. Not ready for collecting this uh, grain yet. So let's leave it off. Dwarves will need food, although not for quite some time. And one of the things that took me a while to figure out is after you uh, get some food, you actually need to put down a table and put food on the table. Um, they won't just go and eat directly out of the stockpile. And that took me a long time to figure out. I felt it was a little unintuitive. But then once you've got it, it's completely fine. Where's my bed? Where's my bed? Well, we're working on it. Tell you what, let's go ahead and craft some beds right now. There we go. So, leaves. We still need a few more. Now, you can get some leaves from trees. You can also hack away at uh, quite a few vines and that sort of thing. There we go. So, we'll get a bed going on. And we'll go ahead and drop it. Um... Beds need a fair amount of space. They need space on both sides to be able to be placed. There we go. That'll work there. Although it's a little bit of a derpy position. Tell you what, let's go ahead and trim that. And trim these leaves. And just generally trying to get something a little bit more pleasant. We'll keep digging out this whole area here. And end up with a, a bunch of space. Uh, they're not actually going to be able to reach some of these tiles. Uh, unless I do something like that. Then we should be okay. And I build a bed. There we go. Thought it said zero. We'll get someone to place a bed there, and then people will start to sleep, which will be good. I don't suppose we can start harvesting the wheat, and we can. What else do we have to build to continue to expand here? Rope. Rope requires wool. Well, I just heard a ba. There's a sheep. Let's go ahead and get them to shear the sheep. If there's another way to take the wool off the sheep, um, I haven't figured it out yet. So I just tend to attack them, which is probably not correct, but you know. I'm not too picky. Here you can see some water. It's currently raining, so water's going to drip down. It's got that sort of water depth physics thing going on. If we had buckets, we'd be able to start collecting this water, and that would be useful for different things. So we've gone ahead and slaughtered the sheep and picked the uh, berries as well. So those will get brought into our base, and we'll be able to use the wool to make some rope relatively soon, which will be useful for something. Um, actually, for making armor. Here, as you can see, we can make wooden armor. We can also make backpacks, which increase the carrying capacity of dwarves, which is really handy. But a backpack is a utility item. If we go ahead and check a look at dwarves, this is their utility slot here. So a dwarf can carry a backpack, or it can carry a bucket of bait to make them better fishermen, or it can carry um, a saw to make them better carpenters, or it can carry a lantern to make them better miners, and so on and so forth. So at a certain point, you start to specialize your dwarves, which actually I think is quite spiffy and cool. Again, I'm hoping that the game properly prioritizes things. I don't actually know for sure. I'm crossing my fingers. The comfort average here is not bad. You can see we've got our sleeping dwarf. Uh, if I select the dwarf over here, it's Gorazin. He is uh, currently enjoying a little bit of nap to try to get his uh, hit points to recover. So can we craft anything else that we can? Um, here it's showing us we've got our food. We've got berries, pine cones, which apparently we can eat. They're worth one nutrition. Wow. All right. Pine cones. You can eat a pine cone. It's just as good as eating some berries. 
What about apples? Apples also have a nutrition value of one. They also do heal you a little bit, I guess because an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Now, later on, we will get uh, cooking technologies if we go and see our cooking chart. Here we go, basic cooking. You can see we can make mixed green salads, grilled meats, and fried eggs as we find things, although we will need a cooking campfire to be able to pull that off. Um, if we can finish the basic illumination, which I think casting a magic light spell um, might send us over the top here. So where can I find? Here's the magic light spell. If I go and cast magic light, will that give me experience points? In fact, it did. There we go. We completed this technology. Lovely. Um, we did construct a bunch of torches, which is part of what gave us a lot of experience points, but you get credit for every everything you do in a technology level. You want to complete the whole set if possible. You can see the set of stars here. This is outlining our current home, which is very nice. It checks for making sure that we've got a complete home that is completely enclosed. But additionally to that, uh, depending on what tiles make up the outer walls of your home, it de helps determine this comfort level. Right now we've got these dirt walls, which are not particularly comfortable. We could upgrade them to wood, or ideally something like stone or even brick later on would be much, much better. So right now we'll keep clearing that out. We got a little bit of coal, which is nice. What I could do is I could keep doing something like this and then just dig out more sort of levels for my dwarves to live in. I can keep making more and more floors, and actually that's pretty good. Sometimes I like to make the houses above ground in these types of games. This time we're playing dwarves, so why don't we go ahead and give them some homes below ground. Now, if any of this happens to hit a larger cavern, that might break um, the fact that this is a, a shelter. One of the things I could do for security at this point is build more hatches, and just on every single one of these levels, go and hatch them up. Most importantly right now, though, I think it would make a lot of sense to get a bunch of ladders going. I'll go ahead and queue a few of those up and just get a nice set of ladders that go all the way down. Maybe we'll queue up a few more trees to get chopped. Build a portal over there. You can chop that tree as well. And here and here. Trees will get taller over time. Oh, we can kill these boars for leather. Um, trees will get taller over time, which means if you don't chop them right away, you theoretically get more wood out of your chop. But I also like to chop things that are a little bit closer to me. Although the portals, to a certain extent, make it a bit moot. You can see this guy, I think he's going out hunting. And try to go and kill this boar. Boars are a little tougher than some of the other things, but not terribly so. It'd be better if we had armor. Although this guy's got a leather hat, or um, a wooden hat, which certainly helps a little bit. Um, did we get our wool? So we can make rope. Yeah, okay, well, only one unit of it. One one use, but one use will apparently make three units of rope, which is pretty handy. Um, locks will be useful later on. You need locks to be able to make doors, nails, pots. All of these things are pretty useful. For now, though, did we just make a piece of armor? I think so. We'll make a set of uh, wooden armor. So one rope goes in there, and then a leaf. I don't know, I guess that's padding. And then some wood in the other slots here, here, and there. I'm go ahead and construct that. And why not construct one more? And one more! We'll get everyone armored up. That seems like a pretty wise thing to do. So you get armor. You get armor. And finally, you get armor as well. Hey, I'm Dwarven Oprah. You can see we're starting to get a countdown timer. This is when the first big monster wave attack will come. That is different from the nighttime attack. This is a pretty big one. A portal will open somewhere, and a bunch of monsters will start streaming through, and you just have to kill them all and survive. Uh, which is not really, again, on normal difficulty, not that challenging. We're still napping. We got some new tasks. Just more missions. Everything worth XP. Here, we can kill some skeletons, collect coal. All these tasks will be things you want to do anyway. It just gives you a hint as what might be a good idea to do. And heck, if I collect one more piece of stone, I'll get a bit more of experience right there. Hey, what? Let's go ahead and queue up. We're going to need a fair bit of stone, so let's go ahead and get that going. Um, getting the sand is not a terrible idea either. Now, one thing to note is trees only grow on Earth, or in Earth. So one of the things that you could do is you can expose more Earth or just plop it down a little bit more. Um, and then you get more and more growing areas. Oh, we just got attacked by a mite. And we found a new book, a miner's book. Excellent. Well, who do we want to make a miner? And Harrigan's already a carpenter, logger, cook. It doesn't really matter. Oh, and we got another dwarf, Mim, over here who's a bit of a smith. Tell you what, you can, uh, you'll can you get the mining book as well. There you go, congratulations. We don't have any, oh, we do have a club. Whoops, come on. A club and a pick for you, which is awfully nice and lovely. We're already up to four dwarves. Everything's going fine. We still haven't um, set them up for eating yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at the wooden table. We've got 
fine number of logs. So we can go ahead and get those plopped down like so. Build us a table. One table should probably be plenty right now. And we're going to want to deploy it somewhere. Can I put it right over here? I can. Good. So hopefully someone will build that table relatively soon. And then we'll go and put some food on it. Now, right now, all our food would simply be um, raw, uncooked food. How's the meat? Uh, you can't even eat the meat as is. We're going to have to cook it first. We don't have any recipes. Um, we should probably build a wooden chair, if nothing else, just to complete the tech tree for that level. There we go. Um, we could put down the chairs for comfort. I don't know if the chairs have to be near the tables. As far as I can tell, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. Um, I think the chairs might just... Do they just increase the comfort level of the zone? Take a look real quick. Yeah. Increase the comfort level. I don't even know if the dwarves necessarily use it. But it looks really nice. And if you're someone who cares about, you know, how your, your area looks, you might want to go ahead and, you know, just throw down some chairs for some dwarves to sit in. We'll get those all placed. we got another... Uh, Another snail going there. We may as well just trim that when we get a chance. Uh, I want another teleporter into my base, actually. It's a little inconvenient not having the stockpile within the base. Oh, we can put a teleporter down here, too. That'll probably save a lot of time. Actually, I shouldn't have left two levels between here. Um, I did it just because this awkward little bit. But, of course, I could have just put earth there and repaired it. No, oh, it's fine. Oh, we're going to have uh, some sort of critter in the uh in the dirt here once we finally reach it but that's going to be okay so a bit of an odd shape looks a little bit more like an anthill other than uh an actual organized home but that's not too bad um my last uh in my campaign i mostly built above ground the house and it took me forever to actually get a base going uh because of that because i had to wait until i had some certain technology to build actual doors as opposed to just hatches this is a pretty easy way to go it so, uh, we still, uh, this is still Gorazin, yeah? It takes a long time to heal in the bed. You can build better beds later on, which are presumably more comfortable and heal you faster. I'm assuming. I'm kind of hoping. Um, just because, yeah, it is a little sluggish at times. I am apparently under attack. It is nighttime. There might be skeletons about. There we go. Fighting some zombies. Not really anything to worry about. Oh, well, I'll go ahead and these, both these portals are about to wear off, so I'll go and plop a new one down. And we just leveled up. We got an extra dwarf. We got two free pieces of wooden armor and some more of those roots. They'd love to give me roots. So if we go to the end, the dwarf we got last time, Mim, never had any armor. And, oh, we still have to wait for our next dwarf to arrive. There we go, we're plus one population. Check again, who do we get? Leo! Give you that, and you don't have any hat at all? Why are you hatless? Not that the Tinker's hat gives you any stats whatsoever, but, you know, at least you look better that way. Oh, there's a goblin encampment over here! Okay, so... Once uh, once and ever now and again, goblins will set up a base and they will occasionally come and attack you, which is what's going to happen here. So we're going to have to go and fight back against the goblins. Um, and then ideally what we're going to want to do is go and blow up their base. We actually get some stuff from uh, finishing off their base. We'll wait for the goblins to show up. Later on, you do get to start building traps. If we take a look at the craft menu, or not the craft menu, the tech web, you can see... There's the trap here. That's not the one. I'm... Oh, fortifications. There we go. Fences, wooden traps, wooden cages, wooden spikes. All these things that you can use to defend yourself against these attacks a little bit later on. But for now, we're just going to have to fight. I'm really happy that we've got a fair amount of armor going on. Uh, we don't actually have clubs on everyone, although apparently we just got a club for free from completing our um, quest to collect stone, which is really good. You need a club. Actually, you're the only one without a club. Okay, can we make um, can we make headgear? I don't remember if we have any technology for that. Ah, oh, we can. Good. Make me a couple of those. Ah, oh, which completes another uh, tech tree, which is very handy. So with these helmets, I'm going to go ahead and make sure to equip a few more dwarves with helmets. Like so, and like so. Now, as far as I can tell, these simple hats that I'm left with, um, I don't know if I can sell them or do anything with them at all, actually. I don't know if they just sit in your inventory. I have no clue. Maybe they can be expanded to something else. Looks like these, um, these goblins are actually stealing some of my stuff. Because I think this is exactly what is going on over there. So we'll finish off the ones that are nearby. House walls destroyed. Really? Um, no, we're still... We still have a contiguous zone, don't we? Does that not count? Oh, we may have to go and drop some dirt in there. And apparently I'm out of dirt. Oh, I think all my stuff has been stolen. So we better go and beat up all these goblins and finish them off. Because they're taking all of my stuff. 
We got some dirt waiting down there, so as soon as we're done fighting, we'll be fine. Um, am I out of torches? Oh, of course, I'm out of everything. I forgot, they stole all my stuff. Go and drop a teleporter there and there, just for the sake of everything. Well, let's finish these guys off and get my stuff back. Um, I don't know if you can move your stockpile. I know later on I saw something about that. I think the thing to do is mostly to just get our stockpile enclosed within walls as soon as possible. And mostly I want to uh, unlock the door technology to be able to do that. But there would have been other ways to do it as well. There we go. I think we beat him up. And now if I go and click on the base itself, the base will get attacked and eventually we'll get hopefully some of our stuff back. There we go. We've, we've retrieved some of our torches. Um, I don't think they actually brought everything to their home. Um, in the end. There we go. We'll get that going. So mostly people are fighting. And we're not playing on the permanent death mode. So even if someone had fallen here, I think we would have just gotten a, a, a replacement dwarf, which is pretty good. Um, there we go. Tons and tons of stuff. We'll grab a little bit more wheat. And everyone will ferry all the goods back home. Including our earth, which we're going to go ahead and tuck in there. Now, because there's stone in the background, it'll ask me, hey, do I just want to replace the stone? I'll say, no, no, just build me some earth there. Whole idea is to get another earth layer going here so that we get more trees that grow near our base, which sounds pretty handy. I should actually get a set of ladders down here, which will make life a little easier to come back and forth. Although the portals are also pretty handy for that. Oh, again, we've got the, uh, the dwarf ghosts coming by that are going to try to steal some of my stuff. I really do have to get this enclosed. It is daytime right now. Go. House is once again complete. Thank you very much. Go and dig out the stone in the background. That's been dealt with. Okay, now everything is fine once more. What uh, do we need to craft? So anything like this with a parchment, this represents a recipe that you haven't completed yet. Um, and those are the sorts of things you want to complete to make sure that you get your, um, um, your level ups. So right now, we could really use some extra wool. Can we find some extra sheep? There's one way over there. Set an attack command and drop a portal. I mean, we don't have unlimited mana, but you can set up those portals relatively frequently, I found, and keeps things handy. And again, at this point, we've been recording this for about 40 minutes, which is certainly longer than I like to make most of my Let's Tries. Uh, but I think it's already become relatively obvious. We should put a portal over here, otherwise a dwarf is going to try to walk all the way over here and grab this stuff. And there, too. Um, that there's a fair amount of depth and, and replay going on. I, I don't know, you know, if you can play this game for like 100 hours or not, but after two or three hours, I basically um, just wanted to keep playing more and more and more and more, which is a pretty good sign. Again, you know, how, how many hours of enjoyment will you get out of this? Uh, I don't know. I can't say exactly. Uh, but so far, I'm really, really digging it. So this is called Craft the World. It is available on Steam. Uh, and if I check, it is currently retailing for about $20, depending on exactly where in the world you are. And um, I think it's cool. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.